Okay, we're ready for notes 3E for the Math 4 class. And we're going to learn about a curious relationship between logarithms and exponentials. Uh, we are going to uh, take a good hard look at what the graph of a logarithm looks like and things like intercepts and end behavior and domain and range and increasing and decreasing, all of those favorite things that you've done before. And um, we're also going to look at uh, ways that you can analyze uh, a graph and tell what's going on with the parent function and also begin to identify transformations. So, you know, we've done transformations with other parent functions. Now we get to play with logs. All right, so first of all, I wanted to show you this. This is log base 10 of x, and this is y equals 10 to the x. And when you put both of them on the same graph, I want you to notice something that happens here, is that there is a line that passes right down the middle there, that this is a reflection. And this is not the first time you've seen something like this happen. Now, when I go down to the natural log and e to the x, I notice the exact same thing happening again. This is the line y equals x. And we've noticed that when things reflect across it, x and y have a tendency to change places. Now, there are some that would say that is how we define uh, a uh, inverse that you know basically that logs and exponentials are inverse of each other just the way that adding and subtracting are opposites multiplying and dividing are opposites uh, logs and invert and exponentials are inverse of each other and that's something that can be helpful uh, to remember now when they want us to start actually writing the inverse you may recall that when we first started with something like this, like y equals x plus 3, and we want to write the inverse of that, our first move was to switch x and y and then do whatever it takes to get y by itself. Well, that's not going to change here. We are basically going to switch x and y. And now the goal is to get y by itself. Well, this is uh, a rather basic exponential that if I bring the x over here and I rewrite it as a log base 2 of x equals y plus 3, then if I subtract the 3 from both sides, I've got this log base 2 of x minus 3 equals y, and that's what I wanted, y by itself. So we're done with that. It really can be that simple. But now I'm going to warn you about something. You're going to start looking for patterns, shortcuts. Um, be very careful. There are some relationships here. Like, you know, 3 is being added here, but it's being subtracted there. There are going to be a lot of opposites like that. But it's all about the placement, exactly where you place these letters and numbers, that uh, patterns may fail you. Uh, I'm just saying, be careful. All right, let's try next one. If we rewrite it as x equals natural log of y minus 2, well, if I add 2 to both sides, I get x plus 2 equals natural log y, which if I want to get the y away from the natural log, then maybe I need to break it up into log base e of y. Now we'll bring the x plus 2 over here, and we are going to turn around and rewrite it as e to the x plus 2 equals y. Oh, that was nice. We're done. We're done with that. 
Okay, we'll try that again. Y equals two log X. Well, so if I say X equals two log Y, um, I don't think that bringing the two over here is gonna help us get Y by itself. So we're gonna divide both sides by two. Well, I guess we're about ready to rewrite this as an exponential. And if I want to rewrite it as an exponential, I have to remember that that is log base 10. So it is 10 to the x over two equals y. Ah, once again, nice and clean. Y is by itself. Okay. Now here, I want to first of all draw you the parent function of y equals log x. And what's going to happen here is that it's going to pass through that point right there. Remember how with the exponentials and the exponentials would curve up that way and they would always pass through 0, 1? Well, this is the inverse, which means it's passing through one zero and it's actually not going to touch the y-axis and it's going to sweep through there and it's actually going to disappear off in this direction. Um, it actually will not cross this first line until it reaches 10 because this is log base 10. If this were log, log four of x, then it would, cross, it would reach one at four. Um, so that's what the, the parent function is going to look like. Now, all we're doing with this one is we're moving it up three, right? One, two, three. Now, my asymptote hasn't changed a bit. And again, here, I'm not going to reach the next notch up until I get all the way out at 10. So that is what this should look like. Now, there are a couple of little tweaks with this. Uh, this begins to look like same old, same old, but there are, are one or two uh, interesting uh, tweaks to it. First of all, the domain. This is an asymptote, which means it does not ever reach zero, but it does go on forever in the other direction. Now the range goes forever down and forever up, although up happens really slowly. Now the x-intercept is an interesting question. It is not zero, it is not one, but when it crosses the x-axis, it is where y is zero. So in a sense, um, We're basically saying this zero equals log x plus three, which if I subtract three, that means negative three equals log x or log x equals negative three. Now, if I were to remember that there is a base 10 there, then I could turn around and write this as 10 to the negative three equals x. Oh, there we go. That's what I needed. 10 to the negative three. Well, 10 to the three is a thousand. So 10 to the negative three is one over a thousand. And y is zero. And we kind of had to do some algebra to figure that out. We, we, we weren't going to get that by just looking at the graph. Now, by the other hand, uh, y intercepts, we said that if y, the y axis is an asymptote, then it will never cross the y, uh, you know, will never have any y intercepts. Increasing, it is always increasing. It is always increasing. So, um, oh, wait a minute now, the intervals. It is increasing from zero to positive infinity. We can't do this in terms of y, we have to do this in terms of x. And the decreasing intervals, it never goes down, does it? Never. Now, the endpoint behavior, we're going to have to say as x approaches, it doesn't approach negative infinity, it does 
get really, really close to zero. As x is approaching zero, y is going down. So y is approaching negative infinity. As x approaches positive infinity, then y is also going up. And so that's what those two should look like. Now, these are basically match the graphs. Uh, this one is your standard parent function, log of x. It passes through 1, 0. It passes through 10, 1. And that is for a log base 10. That is what your standard looks like. Now, anything else is manipulating that. For instance, here I noticed that this point right here is actually up here. I went up to, and this is no longer at 10, uh, 10, 1. This is like 10, 3. It also went up to. Uh, it's like all I did was take my log and raise everything up by two units. Now, in this case, I am at 1, 0. But here I am at 10, 2. I went up twice as far, although this didn't move. That means that I'm stretching it upwards. I'm stretching by a factor of two. That's that guy. Now for this one, it looks like I flipped on the X axis, which means that I should have a negative out front which looks like that guy. It also appears that I have moved up two units too. Oops. And here we went up two. So that is definitely that guy. Now, for this one, I move two units to the right. That does sound like that one. And a lot of these rules are not changing. It's just that where X is may be a little different. Now, this guy flipped on the Y axis. And for that matter, he went down to, flipped on the Y, and down to, yeah, that's going to be this guy. Now for these last few, we're going from math to English and then English to math. As far as the transformations are concerned, this would be, uh, Vertically stretch by a factor of four. And then we would go right five, five units to the right. Okay, here we are flipping on the X axis. And then we're going up three. Here we are vertically flattening by a factor of one half. And we are flipping on the y axis. And we are going down four. Now for these guys, if I am going to reflect across the x-axis, I want a negative up front. I'm vertically stretching by a factor of 4.5. And that's the only changes, so I'm just going to put log of x after that. Here, we are reflecting across the y-axis. 
which means that it is inside with the X, that negative sign, and then up three. <coughs> and then the last one, we are vertically flattened by a factor of two thirds. And we are going left six, which means we're actually going to do plus six inside with X. So those are the usual games that we play with transformations. Now, this one was one that we had on, I forget whether it's unit one or unit two, and out of a class of 30, I swear two of you got it right. And because you didn't notice this little guy right here. Now, when they're asking, identify the transformations from f of x to g of x. All right, so I went from log to a negative log. Well, that means that I would have flipped across the x-axis. I see the x minus 3 in parentheses that I didn't have parentheses over here, which means that I'm going right three units. But here's the thing that y'all missed. This was going up four units from the parent function, and now it's not. That plus four disappeared. How did I get from here? You know, how did I get from four up to not four up? Because I had to go down four. I lost the four that I had in the original function. And it's no longer there in g of x. And that was the thing that most of y'all missed about that question. Um, so, you know, pay attention to what your original is because sometimes it's not always just the parent function. Sometimes there's a little extra you got to uh, pay attention to.